Darkcast Network. Out of the shadows comes the best of indie podcasts. Welcome to the J Squared Horror Podcast, where two lifelong horror fans talk all things horror. Pour yourself your favorite drink and hang out. Here are your hosts, Josh and Jake. Hey guys, welcome to the J Squared Horror Podcast. I'm Josh. And I'm Jake. And on today's episode, what movie are we going to be discussing? We are discussing 2023's Baghead, directed by Alberto Corridor. Yes, and this is, believe it or not, it's not only the final of our Shutter Original Month, which we had kind of mentioned at the end of last week that we weren't sure if we are going to continue with it or not. But also, this is a fan-requested episode by Susan. So, Susan, thank you so much for requesting this episode. You said some stuff the last time I saw you in person, and I cannot wait to get into that (laughs) on today's episode. But before we get into this, fan-requested, Shudder original movie, Jake, let the fans and people know what to do. As always, like and subscribe. On YouTube. Hit those buttons, please. It helps us a lot. Please, please, please. Comment, too. I mean, yeah, fuck if it. You Just want do to, it yeah. all. Fuck it. <laughs> also, real on Spotify. We're on there. As well as Apple. We're on there as well. And always Instagram. All Jay's Bird Horror Podcast. Link tree in the bio. New episodes every Thursday. Every single Thursday, two lifelong horror fans decide to get together. We drink uh, and we talk. All things horror we do whether it is movies that we picked fan requested episode themes or guest appearances we try to have the most conversation based horror podcast out there we know there's a lot of content creators out there but we try to do something original to ourselves where we just watch a movie drink and discuss it based on how we feel after watching the movie we are considered a nuanced free horror podcast because of that reason right there We don't go off the feelings necessarily of how we originally felt watching it. We watch it days, sometimes hours before we do the episode, and we discuss it accordingly. So if that intrigues you at all, please follow along. Check out the whole episode. Stick around to the end. We always give super cool information about contests or about upcoming things that we're doing. And and another place that you can find us is www.jsquaredhorrorpodcast.com. There you can easily click on buttons that will either let you request an episode, request to be live and in person on an episode. You can request to be here in the studio. You can request to be on StreamYard if you can't make it. Or you can ask for trivia at your place of business, anything like that. You can go to our website, check it out. We also update you on any future endeavors that we're doing. Right now, when you go to our website, a Tidewater Horror Convention pops up where you can actually purchase tickets there. We've been keeping you guys in the loop. We're going to do a contest here in the upcoming future for two weekend passes to the Tidewater Horror Convention, which we are super excited to give away to a earning, deserving fan. So make sure you keep listening in to find out how you can win those. What I'd also like to mention real quickly is we are a part of the Dark Cast Network, everyone. We are. We are. The Dark Cast Network is an independent podcasting network with paranormal, true crime, strange, and now horror podcasts. If you need horror fills other than when we release episodes, please go check out the Dark Cast Network. You can check them out at www.darkcastnetwork.com or you can go to their Instagram, Dark Cast Network, and find a plethora of content creators that are doing really cool stuff in the podcasting game to keep you entertained for your week. Jake, how you feeling, man? How's the week been? Weather's been crazy in our area. Um, how you been, man? Been good. Very hot. Very hot. I will say that. We're very struggling. Hot. Yeah. Us husky guys are struggling Just out there. Just pouring sweat all the time. All the time. I think that's been pretty good. How about you? I'm all right, man. You know, I'm 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 doing well, staying good. busy, trying to uh, trying to keep work going and the podcast going and all of our uh, plans and 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 uh, ambitions alive and well and and just trying to keep our fans entertained for the most part. Good, good, good. Um, I have this thing here on my. Ph- I have two things on my phone here. I was gonna pop them up on the YouTube, um, as an image, but I'm gonna show you real quickly. Would you rather discuss this one right here, or would you rather discuss this one right here? 
And we can obviously kind of say it to our audio listeners, but it'd be kind of something fun to kind of shake the rust off on the beginning of the episode. I'll go with the first one. The first one? All right, guys. So obviously on YouTube, it's going to pop up right between us, as you guys see with our other little images and stuff. But it is, if you survive one of these ordeals, you get $250 million. Which one are you choosing? And it's a Jason mask saying, survive the night chased by him. There's an Annabelle doll, say, stay in your home for three months. There's a Chucky doll that says, we'll have three attempts to get you. And there is Freddy Krueger, and it says, haunt your dreams for a week. So we'll start with you, obviously, see which one you're feeling. And then, obviously, anybody that wants to comment down below on YouTube, or if you want to comment on Instagram, we can post this as well. But I want to know what you're choosing to survive for $250 million. Chucky. Chucky, three attempts. Yeah. <sighs> See? I know I can beat him at every single attempt. Yeah, but remember from the John Cone episode. Okay. He's the surprise factor. Cool. Shout out to John Cone, by the way. John Cone is great. He's yeah. a friend of the podcast, great author, great friend now. And uh, he brought some light to Chucky, to whereas uh, I don't know if, I'm, if I feel that same way anymore. Really? Because he has the element of surprise, and sometimes I'd be distracted. <laughs> so I feel like he could potentially get me I think when, I'm, when I'm not thinking about it. If a doll's coming at me. I'm... We have two dolls and two horror icons. So... And why I wouldn't do that because three months in the house? Possessed. Yeah, it's possession. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. Survive the night being chased by Jason or haunt your dreams. I always, you know, we talked we talked about this during our nightmare episode where you had said you don't sleep very much. I was on the fence if you were going to go Chucky or if you were going to go Freddy. I was those tied, were my I was two. T- yeah, those those were my two. Yeah. Uh, for me, I feel like um, I'm just going to go for nostalgia purposes and for for just trying to know if I could do it. I'm wearing the shirt right now. Oh, uh, I'm going to see if I can be <laughs> if I can survive being chased by Jason Voorhees because okay. it just says survive the night. So out of all of this it's the least amount of potential time. It's just one chance of getting away from him. And I feel like you could do it. I could do it. OK, I feel like I could because it, it just says survive the night chased by him and i feel like chase isn't always his best it's always people getting tripped or fallen or dumb you know bad decisions so yeah i think for 250 million i'm gonna give it my all okay (laughs) and get away from jason Voorhees. so that was a little fun way to start the episode in my opinion i saw him pop across the social media so i wanted to pop him in that was good good. Uh, but now we get to get into baghead from 2023 like we mentioned this is a shutter original um i'm pretty sure it was straight to streaming as far as I'm aware, I don't remember a theatrical release. Um, so like we've mentioned a numerous times this month or this last month, go get Shutter, go get AMC Plus, check these out. Um, you know, obviously this this is a spoiler riddled episode, so we don't give a spoiler free sex or anything like that. We just talk about parts of the movies that we want to talk about and discuss different aspects of it. Um, after the conversation we had with Susan last week, were, were you were you expecting more? Did you get less? How are you feeling post the movie? So I hate when people <laughs> like fucking hype it up. Yeah, yeah. So this is a proper way to do it. Hey, have you seen Baghead? If you say no, you, you should check it out. Yeah. I think you might I like think it. You might like it. Leave it at that. And in quotations, I think you might like yeah. it. Yeah. It's <laughs> not, how it was portrayed to us yeah. or portrayed to us. Yeah. You guys seen Backhead? No. no. It's better than Barbarian. It's better. <laughs> what? Which, if, if anybody was there when we were at the bar discussing this, I immediately got like ready. You did. And then it was just cool because like we were kind of on the fence. We have a, a guest appearance that's going to be happening shortly. We'll let you know at the end of the episode who that is. But we were kind of on the fence of what we were going to do next week. Yeah. And neither one of us were, were vibing with Kill the Neighbors or Destroy the Neighbors or whatever yeah. that one was. At the time when we decided it, it seemed kind of corny in 80s. But as time went on with our shutters, I just was feeling less excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Then Susan, a longtime fan, a good friend of the podcast, something that we, somebody that we adore and we appreciate. Uh, she supports us very well. And obviously, like this situation... Uh, think she knows us better than she may <laughs> actually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we, uh, we both kind of had this moment, I'd say probably like Saturday and we were both like, yeah, let's do back. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's do backhead And let's like, we hadn't even seen it yet, but we kind of both knew that she was saying some, some pretty epic things about it, especially yeah. in comparison to like barbarian. And for me, talk to me as well 
Um, there's some aspects of each of those movies, which were which were smashing hits in their own perspectives. Yeah. Um, but I, I got into this movie. I then got what I got out of it, which obviously we'll get into. So uh, I don't know if this week we'll have favorite kills. We might, but definitely stick around. We're going to have our ratings one out of 10. So make sure you make it to the end of the episode to hear that. You guys can always comment down below on YouTube or on Instagram to do your ratings. We haven't had that happen yet, but we're looking forward to it. We want fan ratings as well. We can mention them on the next episode and be like, hey, these are how our fans were feeling about the movie versus how we felt. Uh, It's something that I would like to kind of trend in our favor because it's something we do on every episode. Um, but now we can get into this. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna do the thing that I've done a couple of times where I'm going to look up the synopsis, kind of read it for our fans, and then we can all together go about this movie. Because like I said, if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. But um, I definitely want people to watch and to discuss this movie because of what Susan said. So this is the <laughs> first time ever I've... Started an episode, not had a predetermined rating in my head. So you don't currently? I'm going to have to figure it out as we go, honestly. Yeah, I have I have a rough one. I have a rough one. I'm going to figure it out as we go. All right. How I feel about so it. So the plot for Baghead 2023. A young woman inherits a rundown pub and discovers a dark secret within its basement. Baghead. A shape-shifting creature that will let you speak to lost loved ones, but not without consequences. So that is the quick little IMDb plot summary. Okay. Pretty solid, honestly. She doesn't inherit it, though. Um, She chooses to take it on. So let's go ahead and clear that up now. There is a rite of passage for this particular location with the signing of a deed that you have to make. It cannot be passed to you by anybody. So this isn't a predetermined destined thing. So that part's wrong. You have to decide that it's going to be yours. And that plays into this movie because of what happens. Yeah. So she's a distraughten beaten down college student yeah, she who just, has no future just got evicted yeah she's going through the lows obviously a very estranged relationship with her father who yeah. owned the bar at the time and then it kind of uh plays along that now there are aspects of this movie that i was excited about watching the trailer i was okay uh you see a bit you do see a good amount in the trailer um, which I'm, you know, in this instance, I'm neither here nor there on, it does kind of paint exactly what you're going to get. There were a couple of moments that happened for me that I thought were going to go different ways, but didn't. Did you have any predestined or predetermined thoughts about this one going into it? Or were you just, I'm watching this for what it is. I'm watching it for what okay. it is. Other than what Susan told us. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> This now, very Barbarian was very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Barbarian got a very big theatrical release. It had very big names in it. And I feel like Barbarian's, was it three as well? 23 as well? Early 23. Early 23. Yeah. Early 23. Um, and I know the writing processes and everything takes time. And getting these movies out there takes time. So I don't feel like there was any like copying or anything like that. Because they are significantly different in certain aspects. Obviously, Barbarian, in our opinion, being significantly better of a movie from start to fucking finish. Uh, at least that's how I feel. I don't mean to speak for both of us. Yeah, we uh, haven't really talked about it before, but I the won, vibe I'm getting tonight. I 1 million percent agree. Okay. The vibe I'm getting from you tonight is that Barbarian is still superior on our list. The only thing that I had in cahoots or close to Barbarian was Smile, and honestly, I give Barbarian the upper notch. I've thought about this over time. We've covered both of them. If you want to hear our thoughts and opinions on those in our conversation, Go back through our channel. Check them out. They're a lot of fun. We're not going to dive into either one of those movies too much. Talk to me. We did not talk about. We are both kind of iffy about the hype that came with that. But I feel like there are some elements in this movie that kind of gives you the talk to me vibe too. It reminds me of Cobweb too in certain aspects. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Cobweb too. Yeah. yeah. I, forgot. I knew there was another one that we had covered that I couldn't quite put my finger Which on. Which is that also was it. better than this movie. Isn't Cobweb it? significantly yeah. better than this one as well. This movie, The problem with this movie um, is pacing for me. Um, it's, it's an hour and 36, right under an hour and 40, which is the bread and butter for horror. Yeah. Um, it's what, especially, a, a, you know, if we're not getting too, um, like thriller, I know a lot of thriller horror movies team tend to go on a little bit longer than others. This one, this one has a good runtime, but I feel like the pacing super off and the, the, the writing and the storyline is hard 
to kind of keep up with and follow because like it's a it's a roller coaster in the sense of like maybe not your favorite roller coaster. There's highs and lows where you don't necessarily expect them or want them. So I don't think of one high I can think of during the whole movie. So this point for me, pacing was a big deal. Yeah, pacing was a huge deal for me, yeah. I just found it super like boring. It was very boring. It was it was it's hard to like stay engaged the entire time. Oh, it's it's extremely hard to stay engaged the entire time. And I feel like pacing and plot were a big part of it because you kind of walk into this one knowing, as we just read, this girl's gonna get a bar. And you kind of find out early on that the dad gets gets killed by the entity trying to destroy the entity. That's that that happens in the first thirty minutes of this movie. So yeah. that's not like a huge uh, plot point, even though it becomes one. But the way she gets it, um, you know, and you, it it seems very rushed, and you're kind of questioning this guy that just kind of walked up to her and was like, "Hey, I I kind of know the situation. I'm the proprietor of this loc. You know, your your father's." Uh, stuff so i'm gonna kind of walk you through it who seemed shady as fuck so shady yeah look shady seems shady and then obviously being a young woman who just has nothing else she's gonna be like let me try this out for a couple months and she signs a deed and the deed itself is very uh old school it's it's on like some uh like fucking biblical papers like <laughs> like colonial papers you know and you kind of ought immediately the the he like hands her a quill like a, the like you have to dip it in ink pen yeah. and he's like oh it's like tradition for such an old document you're just like red flag red flag red yeah. flag no it's not once you hand me that weird ass pen and I've already seen the door that has matching symbols on it I'm gonna maybe read over this real yeah. quick it was on his ring too yeah and he's like fiddling with it too yeah very uncomfortable situation but I understand that like the low of that girl and just being like, yeah, with somewhere to live and a place to make money. This guy offered me four grand to do something that I'm unaware of right now. My one question for you, and this for me takes me out of the movie a lot. I don't. So one of the big things is you can talk to the dead. Yeah. For two minutes. For two minutes. Um, That doesn't, that does nothing for me. There's nobody that I would just have to talk to. For two minutes. For two minutes. No. So it's funny because the guy you see, he, yeah. he portrays it as if he just needs to talk to his wife to, to say goodbye for yeah, closure. closure. Yeah. When he has the conversation with her, he says goodbye. He's crying. You can tell. I like the aspect. It shows of the person you bring back like their last thing is them dying. Yeah. So they don't know what's going on. They're confused, yeah. Why they're here. It's why like they woke up from dying. Yeah. Yeah. Why they're tied up. What's going on? Yeah. Then he goes into asking her, pretty much. Are you cheating on me? Are you cheating, are you cheating on, me? on me? Yeah. My first time with you. We're not here for that. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what you want all this time? Yeah. And you also realize that the caretaker of the building has control over the witch. So this is a witch demon creature that lives beyond a wall. And a hole that comes out to do this here uh, ritual, if yeah. you will. But my thing is, my biggest thing is, is like, it sucks because I know a lot of people probably have loss in their life and they might want that closure. I don't. Death and me are, we've had a very weird relationship. Everybody in my life that has died doesn't, did not deserve to die. No, but they did. I figure in my head their time was up. So it's it's a huge disconnect for me because, like, I can imagine somebody that maybe, you know, had a super significant death in their life or, or, or fears that kind of stuff, which everybody does. You don't want anybody super close to you dying. And obviously, if they do, you want closure, you want answers, and I get that. But for me, currently, where I sit right now, I haven't experienced that kind of death around me yet. So I don't connect on an emotional level to this like obsession with having to talk to somebody regardless yeah. of the repercussions of your actions, which is the whole fucking basis of this movie. So I have no issue with people wanting to have that final conversation. I get that. Yeah, absolutely. But use your two minutes wisely. Wisely, but also you you know after the first time, shit gets wild after the first two minutes. After those two minutes, it's the witch trying to then control the situation to escape. Yeah. Why can't they just stick to that? Because the witch is smart enough to only give you enough information in those two minutes to where you absolutely need more time. 
I think and that, that is the dumbest fucking thing. I think it only really works in their benefit if you don't have the timer. Yeah. If not, they'll just talk and talk and oh, the eyes change and all that stuff. But but you're seeing physical changes. But I feel it like, starts off of looking exactly like your loved one, and yeah. then after a certain amount of time, gets like as soon as it gets to that point. It immediately starts to take yeah, a dark the turn. The tone changes. Like the tone changes, the, the voice changes, the eyes change. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it goes from like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, why am I tied up? Like, what's going on? Like, am I okay? Like, what happened to, you're the worst piece of shit I've ever met. And yeah. You caused this. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, what happened that like, quick? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, it's like been two minutes. <laughs> yeah, like, it's crazy to me because it's like, I don't know. I guess I haven't been in that kind of grief state to where I couldn't kind of see that happening especially post knowing the rules of the, everybody knows the rules of this situation post a certain point this isn't a fucking secret this movie paints it exactly as it is now the first time when he does it and he's like i know how this goes and he's like i've never done this shit before and everybody's like what the fuck you said you did <laughs> and then and then he does it and he's like put the bag on her head and she does it and she's like tell her to sit down like there are points where it's like he kind of knows what's going on and enough to get the fuck out of the situation without any anybody getting harmed but then you guys continually push it because she's a witch that can manipulate your brain outside of those two minutes and outside of even the even if it's four minutes of being down there she's manipulating while you're in that building the whole time so she's playing these tricks and doing these things and I just don't get it because it's not like it wasn't fucking known what exactly she was. The dad got killed trying to kill it. You know that from the tape. You know that from the evidence of seeing your father burn the fuck up. And still, you don't think, don't go downstairs ever without the keeper or a clear mindset. Yeah, I think there's way too many emotion in this movie. It's grief. It's grief, which, like I said, yeah. maybe it, I'm not the best person to it, speak on. It, it just makes you do things you wouldn't necessarily do. But it's not your fucking loved one. It's, no matter how you slice and dice it, you know that. You do. Everyone in this fucking movie knows that. Yeah. Even the dude. Yeah. Knows that. He's being greedy and selfish to try to get a couple minutes to get answers because it, there are times where you are. I feel like somehow talking to that person, I'll give you that. But it's not going to give you what you want because at the end of the day, as the dad fucking said, she's more in your head as you are in hers. Yeah. Which is everybody in the situation. It's fucked, dude. I yeah. mean, I get it. For certain people, this movie's probably eye-opening and like, oh, I could like, I could imagine being in it. I can't. I can't. I would I would charge people four thousand dollars in two minutes, cut that shit off quick, and be a fucking millionaire. First of all, they're not getting the full two minutes. They're getting one minute and minute, forty-five seconds. Or maybe a minute and a half at the yeah. most. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck with the timer so you yeah. think you have to end it quicker. Because then right. it's still not making that switch yet. Yeah. You have control of the situation. The dad fucked up because what? He was talking to the wife that died of cancer. If you just stuck to the business plan, you're actually going to be okay as long as you have a decent mental. The problem is everybody that signed on that stupid fucking deed or was a part of this had a fucked up mental. Then they start wanting to talk to loved ones. Yeah. And it fucked them every time. Every time. But which I like was when she brought her dad back. He explained it to her. He's like, look, this is what the fuck's going yeah. on. And I said, hey, don't bring me back. Do not bring. He's like catching on fire as he's saying yeah. it. And he's like, yeah. I mean, I appreciate it talking to you. I do. But this is it. What the what the fuck, dude? Yeah. There's just that's a huge plot hole to me. You can't I'm sorry. You can't give us the tape that explained that the dad was like, look, this thing has fucked my life up from the jump. The reason I've never been close to you was to protect you from this. I manipulated and abused this situation, and I'm now trying to take it away i'm trying to end it and you know that it didn't work because a you've already seen the witch you already own the place and he's already dead so you can kind of piece it together yeah. and be like this is a fucked up situation how am i going to go about this yeah obviously this witch can be controlled 
for a long fucking time. A long fucking time. Decades. Decades. It's the people that are in charge of her that cause the issues, which it wouldn't be a movie without that. I get that. But you can't give us that so early. Now, we watch we watch the tape as movie consumers yeah. at the beginning of the movie. So we're all kind of getting this picture painted earlier. She doesn't have to wait much longer after that because when she officially signs the deed, she's immediately given the tape that she watches that day. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me. If if it would have been left in the house and she was snooping around an hour in, maybe I could believe the rest of the shit that happened. I just can't. Everything was painted too clearly for me. So you wanted her to get the place and like for looking around for shit and just fun, come across come it. Come across it. Okay. Because it, it's clear that that's a warning to the new owners. And he even says it like, hey, here's your instructions on the, the situation at hand. Yeah. That guy didn't lie. As much of a piece of shit as most people think he probably is, is he? He didn't lie. He didn't lie. He said, you probably don't want this place. And she's like, I do. And he's like, are you sure? Yeah, he was trying to talk her out of it. He was trying to talk her out of it. So he's not this manipulative bad guy. I mean, at the end of the day, he technically is. But then once you agree to it, I've done my part. Yeah, you signed it. I'm out of He now knows. She's fucked. Let me give you this tape because I'm pretty sure your dad kind of explains it to you. Yeah, and now I'm gone. But something that I also didn't like is involving her friend in it. Well, the friend kind of involved herself. Because if you remember going back, she's like, don't come. I'm good. You paid for my ticket already. And she's like, I already have a ticket. I'm coming. And it's like, ah, all right. You're going to be here. The friend, as much as I'd like to blame the daughter for the friend stuff, the friend got herself in all those situations. You think so? Oh, yeah. Because she was like, she literally told her on the phone, like, yo, you bought my ticket. And what pissed me off is so funny. It's like, as I'm watching the beginning of this movie, she's like, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm homeless. And then she's on a flight. And I was like, how in the fuck? Thankfully, they were like, you paid for my ticket. You've done enough. And she's like, no, this isn't enough. And which comes up later where she's like, basically the the main character, the daughter character is like, I'm constantly your project. You're so well off that you need to help somebody. And I'm that person, which anybody that struggles, I feel that way a lot, especially in our friendship sometimes and like different aspects of my life. You know, my financial situation isn't always the best I get through, uh-huh. but a lot of the times it's like, you know, you'll buy me drinks or when we go out, you'll handle it. And it's like, sometimes you're like, fuck man, like, just like go have your own fun. But sometimes your friends, regardless of what you're saying, will be like, no, fuck you, dude. I got this. Yeah. And I feel like if I would have called you and been like, yo, here's the sitch, you'd be like, dude, I'm on a flight out. Yeah. So like you can't blame the friend. But once I get there. But even when she got there, she did leave and got more information. Unfortunately, her dumb fucking self didn't think. Stay the fuck out of the basement, regardless of the situation. The she didn't even she go into her room where she was passed out on the floor from drinking. It's for place she just went. You check all the upstairs rooms yeah. first. Try one room. Oh, try the basement. And the phone was vibrating. If you just, we've all done it. We've yeah. all lost phones yeah. before in our houses. It. And, got, there it is. and you start getting closer, you know? Yeah. And shit like that pissed me off. And it caused massive plot holes in this movie for me. That friend was so smart that she went to a, a location that she found through research to get more information on the situation to then just die off screen and because she went into the basement alone, it doesn't it doesn't add up. It doesn't do that that character justice. Yeah, she went to the basement and the the witch. The thing. Yeah. Which was down Bag there. Head, yeah. Ate the So it became that dude. Yeah. Explained it. N- knew twenty minutes uh, two minutes is almost up. So she yeah. get closer and closer to you. Yeah. And you're fucked. Yeah. I just don't feel like a logical person would have put themselves in that situation. They wouldn't have. No. And honestly, after she was there for the first time, she would have told her, hey, we're not doing this shit anymore. We're not going in the basement anymore. We're not. We're done. But that makes no sense why she would go down there alone because she's been anti-basement the entire time, even with the controlled situation of her friend being down there controlling Baghead. Yeah. It just did not make sense to me. Like, you can't paint this character so well. To then have them die, A, off screen, piss me the fuck off, and then B, in such a just not true to the character kind of way. You can't build up a character for 40 minutes of a movie 
And then for it to off screen completely change everything at its core, that doesn't do well for me. Yeah. That's shitty writing for me. That's just, that's just, let's just get this done. That's, let's, you know, it's a group project and the group ain't doing shit. That's just what it (laughs) felt like, dude. It's like the group project, like there were decent ideas at points, but then everybody else dropped the fucking ball. I mean, I feel like realistically, she was the best character. She is the greatest character in this movie. The daughter wasn't very good. Daughter was shit. She was too emotional. The guy? Way too emotional. Who, and you found out he was fucking like nuts too. Yeah, but so let's get into the guy. We've talked about the friend. We got a little bit of the daughter. The daughter will come back up, obviously. This guy, right? Tell me, you didn't think when he came back and helped her that he wasn't going to be part of the team. 100%. Yeah. He was not. Yeah. Now, 94% of the time, when I'm watching a movie like this, and I get that kind of that get I get that kind of switch in the character where I'm not necessarily expecting it. I'm excited. I'm so happy. You've bamboozled me. Yeah. You got me. I didn't fucking like it. <laughs> I, did, I didn't fucking didn't like it. it. I didn't fucking like it. Uh I felt like it was a disservice to the movie as much as it was in probably a lot of people's opinions, maybe even yours. I don't know. We haven't talked about this movie yet. As soon as you find out when he's when he when he drugs her and then is making a pact with Baghead, it was almost like what was the fucking point in even trying to make me believe that he was going to be helpful? True. There what you didn't you didn't give me enough help to make that worth it. You gave me one bit of what we just said. Oh, Maybe he's, you know, the friend had already died. Okay, this guy's going to step up and be... I thought they were going to kind of fall in love kind yeah. of thing. They're very much attractive of a couple. Yeah. They would have worked, but he's so tied up in his grief. I, I, You know, I can understand that from an outside perspective. Once again, I haven't been through that. But he decides that the only way for him to get what he wants is to be the caretaker. So he signs the deed, but the witch is like, Mm, it don't work that way, and it deletes his name <laughs> off the paper. And I'm like, okay, this is even worse. This is this is so fucking stupid. Nothing I, makes sense. So I think with that, does it have to be a specific pen? His his <laughs> his reasoning behind it is wanting to be with his wife. Yeah, and he said, "Give me time with my wife each day, and you, we'll we'll continue this." But you, you thought she was shooting on you? Yeah, but still, regardless of that. So it makes no sense for him to sacrifice all to be with someone. He were questioning. Yeah, you, you, you. It makes yeah. no sense. Once you question that, yeah, the door is pretty wide. And open. her telling you when she was solely her, yeah, that she was leaving. I was gonna leave you. I was gonna leave because you. you're a piece of shit. Yeah, you're way too controlling. But, but you, you, you drugged me. Yeah, which is a common occurrence because yeah. you drugged the daughter. Yeah, yeah. So his reasoning made no sense. To yeah, him. the reasoning made no sense. Obviously, he has like anger issues, which we see in a couple of seconds. Um, but it's just it's just confusing to me because it's like almost trying. I guess it's trying to confuse the viewer and be like, "Ooh, here's an original idea." Uh, it's not a good idea because once he once he kind of creates that pact with Baghead, he's fully invest. He he's full sent at this point, and he's and she's like, you know. Um, she can't find out, and he's like, she never will. And the baghead's like, mm, but she already knows. And then they look, and she's on the fucking stair still, even hearing that. I would have ran immediately, immediately of my name coming up. I'm I'm gone because I know I have to act like whatever I just heard wasn't yeah. heard by me. The fact me. that you're down here is a problem. Yeah. So then he comes upstairs, and this was what I what I would assume what a lot of people enjoyed. Because, you know, even me, I'm, I'm very guilty of this. I love non-happy endings. And so when this fight between the two of them breaks out, you're kind of like, oh, uh, ooh, uh, they go to the roof. I'm thinking of the crow. Uh, <laughs> it's raining, you know, slippery roof. What's going to happen? She slips, hits him, slips, and then they do this little, like, over the ledge. Hang on. She's like, hey, like, maybe, like, please don't do this. And he's like, got to do what I got to do, doll. <laughs> Drops her. Hits, I mean, three plus stories onto fucking concrete. Yeah. She's dead. It just, just blood. It doesn't, I mean, it's not like gruesome. No. It's definitely but like you know a PG-13 kill. But yeah, you know she's 
dead. You know, there's zero chance for her getting up. Then he's downstairs in point two seconds, standing right next to her, and carries her body downstairs, and says, like, I did what I had to do. So we're getting towards the end of this, and I'm like, I'm so fuck. I don't give a fuck anymore. I stopped giving a fuck once I heard this whole baghead guy plan. So I knew the movie was going to end that way. The way it did? Yeah. Yeah. So the baghead is like, you have to have her come back to give you the deed. And you're like, I'm so confused. Because the prior caretaker did not do that. It was just a specific ink pen. Yeah. Is what my brain's now telling me because when he signed it with a normal one, it didn't work. Yeah, because if they had found out that she was dead, they would just sold the property. Sold it. And whoever yeah. the next person is, the next person. Yeah. It would have been a natural, like it was this time. Yeah. But she knew he's so grief driven, he's going to listen to whatever I say. Yeah. He's going to just do it. But Baghead didn't think of the consequences. Or so. All right, so let's just get let's just get the shit over. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm legitimately confused at the end of this movie. Now for Baghead, so pretty much how it is is the Guardian. Yeah, you would never want the guard the person who's in control. Yeah, of Baghead. Baghead. Yeah, to be Baghead. Baghead. Yeah, because now it's one person. But she made the Baghead made that happen. Yeah, she she wouldn't have known that was a bad idea. So. Like I'm, I'm legitimately. Okay, so confused. once once a girl dies, yeah, brings she, her body down, lays her down. She gets brought back. Yeah, as the two minutes of baghead. Yeah, yeah. No, two minutes. That's just her. Oh, sorry. Two yeah. minutes from baghead. Yes, 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 yes. She explains to him as her that he fucked up. You done fucked up, Aaron, because you made me and and in baghead almost one. one. Yeah. So now, since I am in control, yeah, I can. Come and go as it please. Manipulate the situation. Yeah. That is the grand finale that yeah. we had waited so an now, hour for. What I don't like is. An hour and 30 minutes for? It almost like has like a saw type uh, recap right, yeah. right after that. Yeah. To where it makes it. I was playing the saw music I in my saying, head while I had. I mean, dude, like literally, if they would have put that in there, I'd be like, that makes sense. Yeah. But they tried to make it seem like that was obvious from the beginning, and it wasn't. It was not. It was all. not obvious. You tried beginning. to throw it in there. It wasn't. You, you tried your best to solve this shit, but it didn't work. No. Yeah. It pissed me off, dude. It pissed me off royally because Baghead gave him the idea to do this. Dead girl had the brains about her to be like oh i'm in control she wasn't because it turned into the mom and the wife fucked him up killed him and then knew now like the daughter all the work she had done everything that her father had told her was gone even though she realized in the moment that she was partially in control of baghead release baghead into the world What? Yeah, because now... Because now what? Because now Baghead's, I guess, human form... Yeah, but is that girl. somebody that knew that she shouldn't have been released. So that whole line, uh, or that whole realization of I'm kind of in control too is bullshit. You were in control for two minutes. Baghead is in full control. Yeah. But knows that she can probably get a lot further being a pretty blonde. Yeah. <laughs> that no one knows is dead. Yeah. Yeah. Even though her body's in the basement, which gets burned up. Yeah. Because it then lights on fire. Yeah. So now. Miraculously. They'll never know. Bones, teeth, they don't burn up. Nah. Dental records. Who's the last person that bought this place? Oh, that girl. Let's check her dental records. She's still out there, but her bones are right here. (laughs) Boom. Done. Backhead makes it five feet. (laughs) This is, this is, this is honestly such fucking bullshit. If 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 you got the grieving um uh, talking to somebody dead, watch fucking talk to me. Um <laughs> watch Pet Cemetery. Uh <laughs> like fuck, I can think of at least two right there better movies to get that feel for you. I feel like this movie did such a disservice to itself overall. It was so rushed. It was so just not put together well. 
you can't build up certain plot lines and certain storylines to then shit on it completely at the end of the movie. Now, the ironic thing of when she became Baghead and had that moment of realization, I thought to myself, this might be an instance where the end of the movie makes the rest of the movie better. But then it continued. (laughs) The fact that Baghead won made this movie fucking stupid because of how they went about it. For me, I don't agree with the realization of her being potentially also in control of Baghead to then release it into the world. I feel like there should have been an internal conflict to where it's like a suicide where it's like, She's already fucking dead, but she gets the witch as well. And that this movie would have been okay at best. But once it walks up those stairs and the paint turns into blood and the building's burning down, it dropped significantly. And it was pretty fucking bad to start with. Okay. This is the prime example of hope and demise. Whole movie shit, in my opinion. All right. How do you feel? Even though I saw it coming. after Yeah, you saw it coming. I I didn't. I'll be honest with you. But when it happened, I was like, I knew it was coming, but did not like that it happened that way. But now, thinking about it again, yeah, for the two minutes that she's in control, she explains to him. There's no point. She explains to him, yeah, well, you know, you killed me. I'm still the guardian. I'm now back as about to take over this thing. Yeah. You're fucked. Yeah. But then when you mention, but it still flashes them between his mom and his Yeah, his he, wife. she's not in any fucking control. And now it's back her. Yeah. He that just, makes no fucking sense. Yeah. If she would have just killed him and then killed herself to kill the witch, yeah. almost like ran behind the wall and just fucking like started bashing yeah. her fucking head in or some shit yeah. to be like, even if it was like somehow like this two minute race against the clock type shit. Would have caused a lot of anxiety type stuff. Yeah. Like, and just like really, really amped up the end of this movie. And then like everything is just the building burns down. The witch dies. She dies. He dies. Everybody in the situation dies. It sucks. Yeah. Makes more sense to this buildup of this entire story. What was the point in this movie? What was the fucking point in this movie? The witch getting the revenge. And it's all I can think of that. And <laughs> just the things people do for grief. I get that. I get yeah. the grief part, but just it's a it's a it's a it's a shittily pieced together puzzle. Because it happens with the daughter too. Because I'm pretty sure either the dad or someone mentioned to her not pretty much not to bring back like loved ones and shit. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. It's gonna but, fuck but, with your brain. But she needed an answer from her dad. She yeah. wanted to talk to him, so she fucked up that. Yeah, it just it really it, it, uh, I didn't like it. No. Yeah. Anything that uh, we might not have mentioned? That nope. Some honorable mentions of parts of this movie. No. Um, we kind of discussed this already. Uh, favorite kill? Can we do a favorite kill? There's a couple. Do you have one? I mean, her getting dropped off the building okay. would, be my, would be my top. Because it would be so unexpected. Um, I guess the dad getting lit on fire. At the so beginning and end, yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing was gonna happen, <laughs> yeah, nothing because the friend happened. died. That was off screen, off screen. Him getting his shit broke, yeah, that was okay. So it, it looked weird. It looked weird to me. It's so it's so funny though because like I just texted you the other night about them. Yeah. So have you watched not even season one? I watched a little bit of it. All right. So season two just came out recently. Okay. And I, it's it would be way above our pay grade. It is it is legitimately some of the scariest shit I've consumed okay. in a long time. Season one and season two. It's the race driven stuff. But what's crazy about season two is everybody that gets killed is bent up. And it focuses on bone cracks. It's like a main mm. part of it. And they get like shoved under cabinets or in like hiding spaces, but it's like and their faces are elongated. So, yeah. like, as soon as his arms went, I was, I was immediately like, yeah. "That's stupid." <laughs> a TV show from Amazon Prime shits all over this fucking movie. Wow. Fuck you, fucking baghead, and your stupid fucking movie. Ah, I hated it. All right, well, uh, we talked about it as much as we can. So, Jake, on a scale from one to ten, what do you rate Baghead from two thousand and twenty-three? 
On a scale from one to ten, Baghead for me is a three and a half. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I like that. I finally worked through it. Three and a half seems pretty spot on. I like that. Did anything that I say affect it today or no? Yeah, just pointing out more so stuff that happened towards the end. Yeah. My original thought was like four and a half. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought okay. that. That's worthy of a whole point being gone. <laughs> yes. Three and a half now. Yes. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I'm going to go three. Okay. I'm going to have three. This movie pissed me the fuck off, especially going into it, being told what I was told. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that also did. I took that into account. It plays so into obviously. it for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a fucking three. Um, I would never watch this movie again. I, won't I would never suggest this movie to anyone ever. Um, if you want to watch movies that are kind of like this, we've given you a numerous ones. We've covered other ones that are very good. Um, I hated this movie. Um, it's It's only a three because it did look decent in most times. Um, a lot of CG, which we talked about last week, saving money, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, Shutter. This is our lowest rated Shutter movie, and it's probably one of the newest ones. Other than maybe Late Night? Maybe Late Night. I can't, I don't know exactly when they were both released, but it's going to be damn close together, and Late Night's significantly better as a Shutter film. Uh, yeah, so that's the episode on Baghead from 2023. If you guys have thoughts, feelings, emotions, and ratings, please leave them down below. Um, also leave the answer to the question at the beginning of the episode down in the comments, as you've already heard, uh, next week, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have, this is kind of crazy. This is, this is, this is very exciting news for the J squared horror podcast. Um, a numerous of how to grow your podcast and how to succeed at podcasting is to have and to work with other podcasts. We haven't had much luck with that. Maybe because we're intimidating or so beautiful. I don't fucking know, but <laughs> Uh, we are actually going to have our first other podcast on the J Squared Horror Podcast. Yeah. And to top it fucking off, he is going to be live and in person <laughs> in the motherfucking studio. So, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause to the Horror Bulls Film School and their horror podcast. Believe it or not, the 757 has multiple horror podcasts. We weren't aware of that. Yeah, know that. Uh, we're, we're almost certain that they came to one of our trivias, but we'll ask him next week for sure if yeah. he was the one that was there. I'm guessing so. Like, no, nah, it wasn't me. Because <laughs> all of his other partners, everybody that he does this with is out of town, so it's got to be this guy. Yeah. Um, but yes, he's going to be live and in person. And Jake, let the fucking fans know, what movie are we going to be discussing? We are discussing John Carpenter's They Live. Damn right. Damn right. Give it up for that shit. I've always wondered how we can include this movie in the podcast. It's something that's very fun. Like we've mentioned it before. We've mentioned it before. But never done it, yeah. Obviously, our episodes with John Carpenter are always a hoot. They're always a good time for us. Yeah. We're bigger John Carpenter fans than we sometimes even realize. Yeah. We both have our favorite John Carpenter films. It's going to be exciting to have another horror content creator in the studio in person drinking and hanging out talking about they live uh we've confirmed it with them everything should be a go for next week so make sure to check out next week's episode we are super excited go give him likes and shares and and, and all the follows that you can um we're excited to be working with our first podcast obviously another local group is super exciting we want to build up the local 757 horror community and what better way than to give an opportunity to another podcast to come on our podcast and chat about all things horror I'm super excited. How are you feeling, man? I'm excited, too. Yeah. I'm very excited. We got some other exciting news coming up in the month of June. Uh, we're trying to do some fun and exciting things. Summertime is tricky. Everybody's got vacations and plans. Horror always takes a nosedive in December and in fucking holidays and then in fucking summer. But we're going to do our best to keep this thing as high as we can and bring you guys some enjoyable content. But never forget, if you want to hear anything... Drop it in the comments. Go to our website, www.jsquaredhorrorpodcast.com. You can request anything, as you heard here. Sometimes it happens on the blink of an eye where we just go, this fucking fits, and we're going to yeah. cover it. Uh, if we do cover anything, we'll let you know. We'll shot you out and do anything like that. Uh, so please like, comment, subscribe. Go to our website. Check us out. And just keep enjoying the podcast. Um, the contest for the two weekend passes to the tidewater horror convention i told you we were going to have an answer this week but i don't <laughs> we didn't even talk about it so keep an ear out we are still going to be doing that we just have to button up how 
Um, we're just trying to, we're just trying to, you know, lead you guys on, get you guys all excited, get y'all revved up, get y'all revved up to fight <laughs> for your right to party with the J squared horror boys and the Tidewater horror convention. This is a fun convention. We have some exciting news, hopefully coming up in the next week or so about the Tidewater horror convention and potentially J squared horror. Uh, so keep your ears peeled. We're trying to make sure everything lines up, works out right. Once again, these tickets are not donated. They are bought by us for you guys because we want our fans to come, A, be able to meet us, be able to come to a local event, and be able to have a good time all weekend long. Two passes is a fucking steal, man. Uh, it's, 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 they have great people that are going to be there. The, just the whole atmosphere of it is very laid back, very fun, and very local. to the, If you know the 757, the Tidewater Horror Convention almost just – brings the whole identity of our area into a horror convention and i fucking love it uh so keep your ears peeled for that um humongous shout outs always to our main supporters jeff balance if you see the design work between us on the youtube anything we wear that's j squared any of our social media icons are all done by jeff balance himself if you need any graphic design work done please hit us up we'll give you jeff's information he does amazing work for great prices he does uh, a humongous shout out to Lucky Riggs who does our intro and our outro music fits our podcast well we love you buddy thank you so much for supporting us a humongous shout out to Mr. Jake Devine thank you thank you you guys already know he brings an atmosphere to the podcast that I can't imagine anybody else doing he's my best fucking friend in the whole wide world and he is my host on the J Squared Horror Podcast everybody give it up for Mr. Jake Devine Thank you. Thank All right. You. I am happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, anything you want to add before the episode sign off, buddy? Um, Let's see here. No, there is not. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this. Wow. <laughs> is the J Squared Horror Podcast. My name is Josh. And I'm Jake. You guys have a great week. And always remember, it's hip to be squared.